Hi there, super friends. Master Legend here with a important lesson from Camp Legend. Not at the camp. It's a nice place, you know, except for mosquitoes. That's a good thing I got myself got all this on so I don't get bit up by the mosquitoes. But a lesson, a lesson for my super friends out there and some of the young and upcoming super friends. This is a lesson to be learned. You see, recently I have run into some hard times. Many, many years I have helped out people. I mean, I've been on the emergency room, broken bones. I've given out money, helped people out in so many different ways. I don't want to go sound like I'm bragging, but I've done it for many years. I've probably helped out thousands of people along the way. Also with Team Justice with Superhero. I'm starting to think a lot of people would like me to just go join Superhero. Because it's a lesson for y'all to learn. When it comes your time when you need a helping hand, most people will avoid you like a piece of garbage and there'll be some that'll help you but then after that they don't ever want to talk to you again they throw you a few crumbs or a crumb or whatever and a little drop out the bucket and then they think well I've, I've given him a that, that I'm not even gonna talk to him anymore then there's there's a few very very few that don't think like that I'm one of those kind of people I help you out no problem. You need help again? No problem. That's how I am. But not everybody's like that. And what happens is, uh, my great super friends, they'll turn against you. They um, don't want to talk to you anymore. They um, talk behind your back, insult you and stuff, all because you needed a helping hand. But I'll tell you a little of my story of what happened. I was out in Florida, of course. I'm in Arkansas now. I've traveled through a lot of states to get here, and who knows where I'm going to go next. But I have gone ahead and I left Florida because a number of reasons. Coronavirus came around and really messed things up for me. I had a pretty good job working in the air conditioning in the hospital. 21 bucks an hour, you know, that's no big money, you know, but hey, I was surviving. I was doing all right. And I had my own little house, a little um, one bedroom house that I turned into a two bedroom. And anytime somebody needed a helping hand or a place to come stay, take a shower or whatever, no problem. No hassles involved. As long as they were polite, you know, and didn't wreck up things and stuff like that. But then, here you go. So I had to leave Florida. I got to where I couldn't get any unemployment because every time I tried to fill out that thing on the computer, then um, it would just kick me right off. It would kick me right off. Wouldn't even let me claim any unemployment. Once I put in the zip code, that's when it cut me right off. So things got bad. I didn't know how, what to do. I had a little money, a little money. Some people helped me out too, and I'm sure I'm thankful for those that did help me out. But some that don't want to talk to me anymore, I wish you wouldn't have helped me out because a little crumb is not worth um, losing a friend over. So anyway, Master Legend had to move out. I had my rent. I could have stroked, strained it out another month, but I would have got kicked out again by that time anyway, they, there was no protections for me. So, the last straw was when Superhero killed himself. That was when I said, oh no, I've had enough of this Florida. It's Florida has, has stabbed me in the back too many times. After all I've done and tried to help, the times when I needed help, what do they do? Wouldn't even let me get on the website. So, anyway, I moved over to my brother's. I thought that would be an okay idea. It wasn't long before he went into these madman fits and was threatening me and shooting guns over the rooftop towards the cabin I was staying in. So I knew I had to get out of there. He was still the same old idiot. And I had no choice. And uh, I sold everything I could, just about all my tools, all the stuff, 
I lost comic book collection, um, my guitars, my amps, all the things that I worked so hard for all faded away. I was lucky I still had one guitar and a bit of clothes. Not much more, a few little memories, but everything I left in this storage unit back in Georgia. And then what happened was while I was gone, up, I went up to New Jersey. I'll get to that story next. But while I was there in New Jersey, a storm came and flooded out the storage unit, ruining a whole bunch of my stuff that was left though, that I had left, thinking I might come back and be able to get it. Well, there's no use going back then. And then my brother went and sorted through whatever he could get. And, well, that's about it. He got all my stuff, and I, and I wound up pretty much with nothing. I had thousands of dollars worth of stuff that I lost. So then I went to New Jersey because I figured I'd go stay with Topian, and I was trying to catch up with my daughter. But my daughter left before I could get there. So while in New Jersey, I was hanging out with Tothian and helping fix the house out there and working on things. And I, I even got me a job. It took me a little while, but I had to get one that was close by because there's no good transportation or buses out there in New Jersey where I was at. So then things were, were okay, you know, it was all right. You know, I was still sad about superhero and losing everything I owned and all that. So, so then, out of nowhere, these cops come and charge into the house and kick me and Topian out for no reason, for no reason at all. So then what happened was, we were out, I was out in the streets that night, uh, pretty much. I had enough for a hotel. Yeah, and I could uh, stay that one night, but then after that, I, I needed to go take a shower and everything. I had a shower, but after walking and carrying all the, the heavy luggage that I had, the last of my possessions, I had to go hide them in a graveyard. I went and hid my stuff in a graveyard and was hanging out in the graveyard. Then I went to work that night, you know. I, was, I got myself cleaned up and everything, best I could. And I went to work that night, but I knew I had to leave. So I was talking to an old girlfriend of mine who we never really broke up. It was just that we had to go different ways. She had to help her mama and I had to go stay in Florida to take care of my daughter. So she came and got me out the graveyard and brought me over to her place where she had some work and stuff for me to do. And I was hoping maybe we could rekindle the old flame. But that didn't happen, and the next thing you know, she's got her old boyfriend supposed to be coming back that makes big money. See, money, money, that's all what the things are. Money. And um, so she told me I had to get on out of there. So the only thing I could do was I had to lose some more stuff. And, and then I lost some more stuff. And I got, and she, she did loan me some money, loaned it to me, to get me on out of there. And so she arranged a ride to pick me up in the morning because she didn't even want to be there to say goodbye. And then I caught a plane and I made it here to Arkansas. Arkansas. It's got opportunities here, and I and I've been working. People don't realize it, but. When I got here, it didn't it'd take long. I was working and all that, but then snow came and I was snowbound, couldn't get around. With the, I, when I was working, I managed to buy myself a scooter. And, oh yeah, that thing was great. I, could, I went to work on it. I could go patrol the streets with it and I could go all around. You know, it was freedom and a happiness to me. It was like the happiest I was in a long, long time. And because of that scooter, just a simple scooter. And then somebody had to come and steal it from me. And then I lost my good job that I had at Amazon. Make the story short, because I had gotten, I was working at one place and the snowbound thing took place and I couldn't go there. 
But then after that, I got a job at Amazon. And I was working for them, but then without transportation, there's no way I could make it there anymore. And I was paying too much gas money to, to be going there. You know, it's like pay out so much money, you know, just to get there. I might as well be working at some minimum wage job and make the same amount and uh, uh, when it's all said and done. So then after that took place, you know, the scooter, I went working different places and places I could get to on a bus route and, some, and get shadow vision to take me, but I've got to play it cheap, you know, as much as I can. You know, gas is, is a lot of money these days. On the scooter, I was making it with, with like $6 a week. Now in gas money, I kick out a lot, you know, a lot of money. And, well, anyway, super friends, just so you know, the time I've asked some people to help me out, you know, I asked anybody, anybody who wants to help me out, just to get another scooter. That's all I'm asking. That's all I'm asking, but guess what? Not a single person wants to help me at all. It's kind of disappointing because it's not like, you know, I haven't been trying my best and all. Some people see me drink a beer here and there and I make jokes about it and stuff. But I tell you what, the beer I drink, Miller, is is cheaper than a bottled water, okay? You go to the store, you buy a bottled water, it's like almost $2.00. I could get a beer for a dollar. So, and plus it's more nutritional and all that. I was brought up with it. I'm from New Orleans. It's not like I get drunk. Ugh, a little itchy here in the woods. But, um, I don't get drunk. You can ask Shadow Vision. They don't ever, never see me drunk. I drank a few, you know, I've got, you know, where I've been doing it for many years, but I never get drunk. But people try to hold that against me. Oh, if he could drink beer, then he should be able to afford this and that. Well, I tell you what, like I just said, beer is less um, expensive than water. And I don't drink sink water. I can't. It's got too many chemicals, chlorine. Oh, it hurts my stomach bad. So anyway, here I am in Camp Legend, kind of hanging my head in sorrow, because here's the, the moral of the story. The moral of the story is you could go through hell and back and it doesn't matter, you know, to others, but you can save a lot of people from going to hell and back, but it gets quickly forgotten. And then the few people that will help you out, most of them will never help you again and they turn their back on you like you're a piece of garbage. They shouldn't even help me out to begin with because when it comes down to it, it wasn't much and the ones that gave me the least little amount are the ones that act like that's such a big deal. I've given out so much to help people out. I've gotten people in the houses even before, paid their first month's rent, paid their electric bills and all that. I've gone and put my life on the line saving people. Even while I was out here, since I've been here, I saved two little girls from from getting killed. One possibly from getting kidnapped too. Plus I saved four rabbits and two birds. Not to mention, I never say no to anyone hungry. I I get them something to eat or I'll throw them a $5 bill, you know, spend it wisely. If they buy beer, I don't care. But here's the more the moral of the story. The very few people, very few, will still even try to be your friend after you need a little bit of help. They don't even want to be your friend anymore because you ask for some help. And then they don't want to even listen to you or anything because all they expect is for you, or like me, to always be the guy giving, 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 and giving. They're going, yeah, Master Legend, there he is. Look at there, he's leading the team. They're helping hundreds of people out on Christmas Day. Well, tell you, my last Christmas, you know what I got? take a wild guess. I'll show you. It's inside my hand right here. Oh, you missed it. It must have flew away. But anyway, I don't care about that anyway. But I just want those to know that turn their back on me that I'm one day I'll pay you back. 
And those who look down upon me because I needed a helping hand, I never look down on all them thousands of people that I've helped, risked my life, put my life on the line, even got, I got a certificate of commendation from the Orange County Sheriff's Department. I never said no to any of them people. But I will thank those that did help me and haven't turned their back on me and still are my friends. Those are true friends. It'll, it will come back around. It will. Because I don't forget who my real friends are. So anyway, all I've asked for is a little help to get a scooter. Not Nothing expensive, nothing big time. Dropping the bucket to a lot of people I know. Nothing. I could get a nice scooter right now. Three speeds. It would help me out on the patrols and it would help me go to work and, you know, get around and, and do things, you know, like maybe even go fishing, which I don't get to do anymore. So, anyway, that's what I'm saying. I don't ask for much. The times that people helped me out, some sent me food and everything. I was very appreciative. I even shared some of it with, with um, poor people that were starving too because the coronavirus, it, it hurt more than just me. It hurt a lot of people. And I, in that time, I was doing the best I could to help them too. So anyway, it does kind of hurt my feelings because, you know, I think about if I was in a position where I had the big money, and which I don't have it right now, but when I did, it wasn't that big. Anyone that asked my help, I helped them. And I'd still their friend. I haven't said, don't ever ask for my help again. Nope, if I had the means, I'd help them again. It's not fun asking people for help, especially when you're a person that's always trying to be the one that helps others. So, like I say, for those who want to turn their back on me, just turn it all the way around and go. Because I don't forget. I don't forget. Not one bit. Master Legend will bounce back. And I'll remember all that helped me out. Even those that turned their back on me. Yep, you'll be paid back. But then I'll remember who was there for me and who turned their back on me at the same time. So, a lesson for you super friends. I've gone through a lot more than I told you about. This is just quick condensed. I could tell you all the things I've gone through. But, I guess that's enough. But a lesson to be learned. If you can avoid asking anyone for help, especially so-called friends, try to avoid it because then They'll turn against you, they, and they, and if they give you a little helping hand, you know, they'll think that that you're supposed to have done, built yourself a house on it. I tell you what, a bologna sandwich can only fill the stomach. You can't build a house with a bologna sandwich. All right, super friends, I'll see you later. I gotta go do some survival skills.